Hello, this video uh, illustrates how to use uh, control uh, object uh, picture box in Windows Phone applications um, to create uh, an interesting application. In this uh, example, I'm going to show you how to create a wallpaper designer using picture box. And uh, I'll show you how to uh, use a line drawer and uh, image filler and different brushes and pens and different colors to make the wallpaper look nice. So let's begin by uh, this very quick demo of how the application looks like. Let me hit the start button. Then after I show you the demo, I'm going to uh, go through the code and explain how this uh, can be done in WinForm application using c -Shop. So here is the, uh, the application. Uh, gives me some security warnings because I downloaded it from Canvas. So uh, your computer may not be happy about uh downloading uh, a uh, pre-made uh, program that you download uh, from canvas you download a zip file and then you unzip it and you try to run it you may see some errors at the beginning visual studio may say uh, some files don't let you don't let uh, this program to be executed because they are blocked for security reasons. You can simply uh, go to those files, uh, right click on them, go to properties and unblock them. But you know, I don't want to show you that part. I'm going to begin by showing you how to run it and how to create a nice wall wallpaper. Uh, so let's say this is the uh, main form of the application. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to uh, draw a rectangle for my tile. Here you see the tile pattern, which is completely empty. Uh, the wallpaper is made of 12 uh, tiles in a row and eight tiles in a column. Uh, so a total of 12 times 8, 96 different tiles. Uh, and this is the width and height of the wallpaper in pixels. So let's uh, begin by choosing a shape. I said, let's add rectangle to the tile. And then I'll click on add new shape. When I click on this, uh, a new windows pops up. That's a dialog. It allows me to draw a rectangle. As you see, when I'm moving this mouse on this picture box, picture box is a control object. You can just drag it from toolbox and drop it in your program. When I uh, move the uh, mouse uh, on the bottom, I can see the location of the mouse. So for example, this is uh, four or five. When I move all the way to this location, it's 507, 507. Here it's 5016, here is uh, 8 and 502. That basically means the first number shows the uh, horizontal distance from the left uh, border of the picture box. The second number shows the vertical distance from top of the picture box. Then I can uh, choose whatever pen I want. Let's click on the choose a pen. It's going to pop another dialog and let me choose this thickness and the color. For the color, I have to click on this. That's going to open another uh, dialog. This one is the standard dialog. Allow me to choose a color. Let's pick this color and then press OK. And this, you see the chosen color. And I'm going to press OK. And now, after I'm happy with the color of the pen, uh, then I'm going to begin drawing a rectangle. In order to draw a rectangle, I have to left click on any point here. That would be the top left corner of the rectangle. Let's say here, and then I will 
while the left uh, button of the mouse is uh, held and is uh, down, I can just move it. And as soon as I release my um, mouse's left button, um, this is going to stay. And you know the mouse moves, doesn't change anything. As you see, the X location, the Y location, the width and height are uh, also visible in this numeric up down. I'm, I'm allowed to change the location of this uh, rectangle by moving the X and Y location. These are basically the right, the, the top left corners dimensions. So I can say, let's move it a little bit up. And let's move it a little bit to the left. I'm sorry, I moved to the right. Uh, I want to move it to the left, I have to reduce the X location. And let's uh, increase the height a little bit. I'm sorry, height, let's increase the height. And let's decrease the width. So after you draw it, you still can change it, change the, the, the size and the location using these uh, numeric up downs. After you are happy with your um, rectangle, then you can press OK. If you're not happy, then press cancel. Nothing's going to happen. But let's say you press OK. Uh, this will uh, appear on your tile pattern. And also, it appears in the list of shapes. Let's add one more uh, rectangle. Let's keep this one with the default pen, which is black. And press OK. Here you can see the width and height. I can change the width and height of Y. I don't want to do that. Uh, press OK. Let's add another shape, another rectangle. Let's put it in the bottom. As you see, they appear all here, right? Then let's create an ellipse. I have the option of choosing an ellipse. And then I, when I press this, lot, this column, uh, this button, I should say, then another dialog will pop up. This dialog says add ellipse which allows me to add ellipse in a very similar shape. As in, uh, first choose the bottom left, the top left uh, corner of the ellipse, and then drag and then drop, uh, you know, the, you hold the left uh, button, choose my dimensions of the, choose the dimensions of my ellipse, and then uh, leave the, uh, the left button, release the left button, I should say. So I'm gonna hold it now, move it around and release it. If I wanna change the pen, I can do that. I can just say, that wasn't good. Let's change the pen. Let's make this orange this time. And uh, let's draw an uh, ellipse this way. It does it for me. Let's uh, move it a little bit to the left, right? So if you wanna do that, you need to change the, uh, you reduce the X location. And after you're happy with your uh, with the location, then you can press OK. Now I'm going to show you how to fill these uh, shapes with different colors. Let's say this ellipse has to be blue, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first pick that. I can pick any of the four. I will pick it in a list of shape by clicking on this. Then I click on brush the shape menu item, then I click on solid brush. Then here it allows me to pick a color and choose the opacity. Color would be, let's say I said blue, let's pick blue. This is a nice blue and uh, the opacity, I want it to be not 100% opaque, but maybe like 75% opaque. And then I press okay. This is 75% opaque uh, blue color on the ellipse. Then maybe the, pen, the, the rectangle that I used uh, um, black color for, this one, the one on the top, I want to color it with red. So let's select it first, then brush, solid brush. Then I will do pick a color. Then I will pick the red color. OK, make it this time 50%. Um, transparent or opaque, then press okay. Then uh, 
maybe the bottom rectangle, which was black. I'm going to shade it with another color. Let's say this one is going to be purple and it's going to be completely opaque purple, right? Then you can uh, move these up and down. Let's say this, this opaque uh, rectangle, I want to bring it all the way up. So I will just press this. So it has, when I move it all the way to the end of the list, that will be displayed or that will be rendered last. That's why it definitely um, hides uh, or uh, I should say it masks some part of the previous shapes. If I move it all the way up, it is behind all the other shapes. Uh, also, let's say the ellipse can be moved all the way up. So it is masked by multiple items, but you know, except the purple one, which was completely uh, opaque, the rest will uh, show some part of that ellipse because the other uh, shapes that I drew will uh, have been uh, brushed with a transparent color. And uh, after I'm happy about this, I can preview and see my design. This is a, as I said, uh, wallpaper. I can uh, either save it um, if I want, if I'm not happy, maybe I want to change the uh, number of tiles per row. I had like 25 tiles per row and that's a, uh, 25 uh, tiles per column, and then I press preview. It's much uh, denser, and the tiles are much smaller because I'm going to create same 1200. Uh, what was the dimension? 1200 by 800 wallpaper. If I want to make this wallpaper much smaller, let's say I want to make this 240 by uh, well, I cannot go below 240. I'm sorry. Uh, the minimum is 512. Let's say it's 512 by 512. And then I press preview again. It is much smaller, right? And then it draws, it draws this one for me. If I change this and uh, let's say move this all the way here and then press preview, the preview will give me the updated time, right? Uh, you can do multiple items with it. You can select any of these and you can delete it using this button, but say you're not happy with your um, uh, rectangle with uh, uh, with uh, what's the color? Right, let me see if I can find it. This one uh, is wrong with a, this one is a 22. I guess this is the top rectangle. If you're not happy with the top one, uh, and you want to delete it, you just press this button and it disappears, right? It's that easy. And uh, maybe what else you want to do, you want to, uh, let's say, when you're filling your uh, wallpaper with not many tiles, you want uh, the tiles to be, um, uh, you know, hiding the whole uh, space. Um, when they are uh, placed uh, in a way that they are symmetric with respect to x-axis. So you can just click on x-axis and then maybe y-axis as well. And um, just to show you how this will uh, play out, let me add another item. This item uh, would be a rectangle. I'm gonna add it. Let's choose a pen, which is pretty thick, and the color, which is green. And uh, I'm just gonna place it right here. And then I'm gonna make this green by clicking on the solid brush and pick green. And now that you know, I have selected these two x-axis and y-axis rotation for the tiles, when I press preview, I will see it this way. If it was no x and no y, which is the default value, preview it, it will look like this. 
Let me make these smaller so you can see the difference. Let's keep these. All right. Let's preview this. So this is when I have uh, no X, no Y rotation. I'm sorry, it was X rotation. Let me remove the X rotation. I should pick the default, right? No mirroring. Then I press that this is when you have no mirroring or no X, Y rotation. If I choose both X and Y rotation or mirroring, and then I press preview, it looks like this, right? If I only select uh, Y axis and preview, they will look like this. So that's a nice feature to have. And also I can press the signature, add an update signature. And then uh, here, as you see, I can uh, uh, create a signature, let's say M I uh, C. And uh, let's say use this signature. Uh, and then when I preview, the signature appears on the bottom right. You see it, MIC, the bottom right. Uh, I can, when I'm creating a signature, I can update the signature. I can, let's create it this way, maybe use a different pen. This time I'm gonna use maybe a red color and uh, put I at the middle, and then let's change the color again, make it blue. By the way, you know, the signature can be drawn using a similar uh, mouse movement. You know, first you need to hold the left button down and then move it, move the mouse and then release the button. And then uh, when you're happy with your signature, then you press OK. Now, when I preview it, it appears here, as you may see, this is a little bit hard to see because the colors are not uh, opposite, so you don't see it really. But anyways, uh, you can also uh, view the signature after you create it, or you can remove the signature, you can update the signature, you can do whatever you want, save the signature. When you press this, it's gonna let you find the location in your file system and save the, uh, the, the wallpaper that you designed uh, in a, let's say, JPEG file or PNG file. And that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all the things that you need to know about this uh, program. Now, basically I'm gonna show you the code behind this and how this is uh, done in Visual Studio and using Microsoft um, Windows for applications. After I finished uh, the code, then you can uh, continue this program by, uh, creating a uh, custom dialog to uh, let the user select the texture brush, um, another um, custom dialog to let the user choose a custom hash brush, and also let the user choose a linear gradient brush. I will leave the, uh, the way you want, I mean, I, leave, I will leave the, the specification of uh, the dialogues that you need to create for user to choose any of these brushes, texture, hatch, and linear gradient brush to you, you can decide what items or what elements you should have in the dialogues to let the user pick whatever texture brush or hash brush or linear gradient brush they want to use. And then using those brushes, they can uh, fill whatever shape they want. So if I select this and then I select uh, hatch brush, it dialog pops up after I pick the, uh, all the specification for a hatch brush and press OK. That selected item has to be colored with that um, brush, right? And again, as I said, you know, for, for the solid brush, I have this. I have only one button for the uh, for selecting a color, but let's say for hash brush, you need to have at least three elements. One is the foreground, one is the one, one is the uh, one is a um, button for uh, picking the foreground. One is the for for, for color. One is uh, another button for picking the color of background, and one is 
maybe a drop down menu letting the user to choose uh, one of the many possible hash styles. Uh, also for texture brush, you know, you need to let the user pick uh, a file from the file system for the for the image. For linear gradient brush, also there are multiple uh, settings that you need to let the user pick, so that the user can pick any linear gradient brush they want. Right? I only did the solid one, but you do the rest. Now let's uh, close this. That's the end of the demo. I'm gonna now show you the code and tell you how all of this is possible. First of all, in the main form, I have a bunch of menu items. As you see, they're not hard to create. Uh, the save button, uh, and that's it. This uh, sits on a, a tool strip, as you see. And uh, other than that, what do we have? We have a bunch of labels that tells the uh, user what each uh, item is. This is a, uh, I, I'm sure you have wanted to use this as a list box. You used it for the previous homework. Then I have two other regular buttons that allows uh, the user to move the list of, uh, the, the move each shape up and down in the list of shapes, the more they are uh, closer to the bottom of the list, the later they will be rendered uh, for each time. And this is the preview of the single file, single tile. And when you click on this button, then you will see the uh, preview of the whole wallpaper with all of these numbers, number of tiles per row, number of tiles per column, the wallpaper width and height in pixels, and also all of those uh, mirroring settings. Uh, in the bottom, I have a, uh, you know, two list of status label, uh, which is, uh, on in the status strip. And uh, this is, as I said, it's the picture box that shows the demo of the, shows the, um, the preview of the tile, the tile design. And uh, we got one uh, combo box. Maybe you use combo box for, uh, for some of the dialogues that you need to create for the, let's say, different brushes. For example, for hash brush, the hash style can be chosen uh, using this combo box. And then this combo box uh, allows you to select one of the two items we had in it. One was uh, draw an rectangle, one was draw an ellipse, and then this button um, opens a new dialog. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you is basically the Click event handler of this button. This one says if the shape type is selected to be zero, that's going to be the first element. The first one was ellipse, the second one was rectangle. Then you need to create a new dialog. The dialog is called add ellipse. You're all going to see how the add ellipse look like. This is the add ellipse. I just, it's a completely different, separate uh, form. This one uh, is made of a picture box, a button, a bunch of labels, a bunch of numeric up down control objects, an okay button, a cancel button. These are basically mandatory to have it uh, for, a, uh, for a custom dialogue. This cancel and okay button are basically the accept and reject button for the dialogue. And if the user press cancel, then you don't want to draw any ellipse. And then here you just have a, um, again, a status label uh, within a status strip. And then, you know, this picture box is the one that lets you draw an ellipse. Let's look at how this uh, picture box draw an ellipse. I'm gonna go over its uh, events and select the three main events that we have uh, used to make the drawing of ellipse possible. One is mouse down, one is mouse up, one is mouse move. Let's begin by mouse down, which is the very first event that happens when you click on uh, the, the picture box. Basically, it's gonna store the location of the rectangle uh, containing that ellipse. Uh, and then uh, there's a is mouse down, uh, which is a Boolean set to true that shows, I begin 
holding the mouse button, left button down. And then uh, it's going to create a new rectangle. Uh, and then it's going to uh, initialize uh, the image of uh, the picture box uh, equal to a new BMP. New B, uh, BMP, I, I meant a new bitmap, which is uh, allowing you to, you know, uh, hold uh, and store, let's say, an image, and then you can store it using a format like PNG in a file system. So this is not going to do anything special. It's just going to initialize stuff. Then uh, the mouse move. The next, the next one that I'm going to explain, the mouse move uh, event of the picture box. This one is a little bit more complex. This one is going to basically check if the mouse is already pushed and that his mouse down event is, uh, his mouse down Boolean is true. If that's the case, then it's going to uh, find the location of the mouse. This is only used at the bottom left corner of the dialog to show the location of the mouse. And uh, also, it's going to draw a ellipse using g.draw ellipse. G is a graphics within the image of the uh, picture box. And then it's going to draw an ellipse with uh, Actually, I should say it's going to draw two ellipses. One ellipse is drawn with a white pen. We call it the eraser pen. And one is a uh, ellipse that is drawn with uh, whatever brush that you want or whatever pen that you have selected. Um, you may say, why does it draw two ellipses? Because well, when you're moving the mouse multiple times, you're drawing multiple ellipses. You have to first erase the previous ellipse and then you create a new one. So let me show you. Just to make you understand, let's make a ellipse and add a new shape. Now, after I, uh, let's say I'm holding the left, uh, button now of the mouse, and now I'm going to move it. As I'm moving it, I will make hundreds of uh, ellipses. I'm drawing hundreds of ellipses, right? But I only see at each time, I only see one of them. Why? Because at any moment, after every movement of the mouse, I have to draw two uh, ellipses, one ellipse, with the pen equal to the um, background color, which is white, and another pen with the black color, which is the default pen. If I change the pen and make it, let's say, I don't know, red, then I will draw two ellipses. One is white, the other one is red. I need to, at any, after every single tiny movement, I have to draw two ellipses. One uh, erases the previous one, another one, uh, draws a new one. So that's the whole story behind this uh, part. So as you see, I first draw uh, a, a white color uh, ellipse with the old uh, dimensions. This is the old dimension. Uh, and this is the, the new dimension, R. R is a new dimension. What is R? R is a uh, rectangle that you can see um, is created here. You can check out the mathematical formulas behind it. I don't want to go over the details of it, but you know, it's not a big deal. It's just uh, assures that you know you can um, uh, draw the ellipse in any way you want. For example, uh, the reason you see a lot of mean and max and absolute value is because not only I can uh, move this here, I can move um, my mouse the other side as well. You see, I can move it in any direction I want and it draws an ellipse. So it's pretty, pretty uh, flexible and it lets you draw ellipse in any direction you want. 
The reason for all of these min and max and absolute values are because of that. But anyways, forget about those. So you don't need to know all of the details to finish the assignment. Uh, this story is repeated for the rectangle drawing. So if I go back to this buttons, uh, event handler, uh, and look at uh, select index one, which is the rectangle, and go over uh, the add rectangle uh, form, you will see there's the same story happening here. Let me see this. So uh, in this uh, form again, in the uh, event handler, you can see the mouse down, mouse move, mouse up, mouse down looks like this. Um, very similar to the, the rectangle to the mount to the, the ellipse mouse up is this and mouse move is this mouse move uh, basically draws two rectangle at any uh, event one is erasing the previous one and the other one drawing a new one with a bigger uh, or uh, different size so the two rectangles have two different pens and two different sizes now after uh, this step uh, let's go back to the main form. The main form was called main form .cs. Let's find out what's going to happen when I click on preview, right? When I click on preview, the event handler basically opens another uh, dialog, which is called preview. Let's look at the preview. Preview is an empty dialog, uh, empty form with a single uh, picture box at the middle, which is duct fill. You see the duct fill here? This picture basically will contain uh, the whole um, tile. I can go over the paint events uh, of it. It's not paint, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, I, I should, uh, to show you how this is filled, I should go over the actual uh, preview form uh, constructor. So let's go to the code and show you. Yeah, I was right. I should look at the paint event of the preview form. So again, let's go to the preview form. Uh, this is this is the preview form. Let's click on this. Go to the. Where is the paint event? Here is the paint event. And there you go. This is where I make sure that the preview of the whole uh, wallpaper is drawn properly. I basically create a new image and then uh, use the graphics uh, dot from image picture dot image uh, and choosing a texture brush, pass the tile to a, what is tile? Tile is basically uh, the, the image that was uh, created by the user in the main form. It's basically that image, right? I'm going to use a texture brush with this picture, with this tile. And uh, guess what? I have to, where's my preview one? Okay, so I have to set the mirror style to either no mirroring, depending on whatever the user I've selected in the um top left menu uh, it's either x-axis i just need to change the wrap mode tile flip x tab flip y and top tile flip x y and then after doing that then i have to uh fill the whole rectangle with the brush that i mentioned with the proper wrap mode and proper um file image uh and fill the whole uh, form for the preview and also, I got to draw the image. If you want to change the look, I'm sorry, I got to draw the signature. If you want to uh, change the location of the signature, then you can come here and select whatever location you want. And my, my location is negative 125, negative 175, uh, added by the size, width, and height. That means uh, the, the, the signature is in the bottom right corner, it's 125. Uh, pixels uh, away from the right border and 75 pixels away from the bottom border. If you want to move it in a different location, you can do it. I assume that signature should be on the bottom right. 
So that's pretty much it. Uh, what is uh, signature? Signature, I'll show you at another uh, image uh, that you can set by clicking on this button. So let's go to this button is event handler. Um, the event handler basically opens a signature dialog. The signature dialog looks like this. It's another form again. You have a picture box, which is duct. Uh, is it duct fill? It should be duct fill, yeah. And then I have three buttons, which are, look at their uh, ducts and uh, their duct is bottom. The duct of all of the button, uh, buttons are bottom. Uh, all the buttons are bottom. And also, basically, uh, each one serves a purpose. The clear uh, clears the picture image. Image. Uh, they use a different button, opens a, a different uh, dialog I showed you, and uses uses as my signature, which is the accept uh, button of this dialog basically closes the dialog. It doesn't do anything, as you see. Uh, and, you know, this image basically, uh, this picture box basically holds an image. That image will serve as a signature for the whole uh, the wallpaper. There's nothing else to talk about except this picture, this uh, picture boxes, event handlers for mouse down, mouse move, and mouse up. This one is not as complex as those that I showed you in the, the draw rectangle and draw ellipse. This one is pretty simple. You always keep track of one location. Uh, that location is the previous location of the mouse. And always when the mouse is moved, you have to draw a single line between the previous location and new location using the signature pen color and signature pen width. Uh, as you see, the last point to the current point uh, will be the line, and you can smooth it if you want using anti-aliasing just to make the signature a little bit nicer. And that's pretty much it. Uh, wow, this was a very long uh, explanation, but let me show you the save uh, button as well. And then we can um, pretty much wrap this uh, video. The save button, if you look at the uh, event handler of the save button, it's going to first open a, um, save as image, uh, it's, all, it's gonna open a uh, save file dialog, uh, which is a standard dialog and let the user select the location. And it's going to, let's say, save the image at a given uh, file name, uh, at, the, at the file name or at the location that is selected by the user, right? And uh, as you see, you know, this part, which I have um, written is basically making sure that the actual, um, Wallpaper is made with the right mirror style and the right tile and the right size and um, assures everything before uh, this is uh, this is where I uh, draw it. This is where I add the signature and after all I add the, uh, all the tiles and the signature, then I will uh, open this dialog and I will basically uh, save the image in that uh in the location that is specified by the user in the using the uh the save file dialog and that's pretty much it uh, just make sure that you continue this um uh, incomplete program which is available on canvas uh by basically adding uh multiple i, I should say three more uh Dialogues, two more forms, one for each of these um, brushes and let the user select whichever brush they want, not only the solid brush, but also the other three. Thank you for watching.